So, let's talk about maps, baby. Let's talk about two plus three. Yeah. So I've had a few questions all about the recent drugs calculations exam that I had. I thought I'd just do a little vlog because there seems to be quite a few students that are really worrying and panicking about the maths exams in nursing and hopefully it's going to reassure you and make you feel a little bit better about the situation. Firstly, I'm going to tell you now, I am terrible at maths. I'm not even joking. I said in one of my other videos, I got an E for my GCSE in maths. I am really bad. And maths was one thing that I really, really worried about when coming into nursing, especially second year, because I knew it was going to be drug calculations. I got myself in a frenzy, got myself in a panic. I'm sure I vlogged about it. And I was really, really panicking about this. But you know what? I've just sat my maths exam. It was drugs calculations and it was easy. Guys, it was easy. I did it in seven minutes. We had 10 questions. It was, we had 30 minutes to do it in. I was finished in seven minutes. That's how good it was because I was just there like, what? This is simple. I didn't realize how simple it was. So let me start you off with first year and also university entry because you're gonna, some universities, you have to sit a maths and English exam before you have your interview to get into nursing. And these, literally these exams are, are just basic and they are literally just multiplication, their division, their fractions, their decimal points, percentages. There's nothing really awkward or tricky. No one's out to trip you up. They are really simple maths and it's literally if you go onto Google um, GCSE bite size or something and just have a go at those you'll be able to pass that. So let's erase that one first of all, because it is just simple maths. The first drug calculation question that um, I had was this one. So I've just wrote it briefly and it's basically, so the doctor prescribes five milligrams of olazapine, but the medication you have is 10 milligrams in two mils. How many milliliters will you need? Can you work it out? Basically, you've already got 10 milligrams in two mils. You only need five, so it's literally half, one mil. That's literally the answer. It's as simple as that. But if you have a, an equation like this, but there's different numbers and you really, really can't work it out because for whatever reason, this is the equation you need. So you need, you need, so what the doctor prescribes is what you need divided by what you've got in stock. So whatever you've got in stock and then you times that by the stock volume. So however many milliliters or whatever it's in. So what you need divided by what you've got times by stock volume. And that's literally the only equation you need for that part and it will save your life if you come to a trickier sort of question but that question for me was quite an easy one and they're not out to trick you so why would they trick you that you know they just want to know your skills and that you can work something out because we need nurses why would they want to trick you the next one is about um, percentage of body weight so if a patient loses weight, what percentage of their body weight have they lost? And I was just like, what? How do you work this out? But it's so simple. I'm, I'm going to explain it to you now. Let's say you have a patient that is 69 kilograms that when they come onto your ward and when they go home, they are 57 kilograms and you want to work out what percentage of their weight they have lost. So when I show you the equation, just stop the video and see if you can work it out yourself and then I'll do the little explanation and show you how to work it out and see if you got it right. Let me know. So what you do is this equation. So weight will loss divided by the original weight times 100 and that will give you your percentage. It will usually be point something something something. In my experience, I haven't had a whole number yet. So let's work this one out. So first you need what your actual weight loss is. So you do the 69 kilograms, take away 57 kilograms, which will leave you 12. So then you do the 12 kilograms, because that's the weight loss at the top. And then you divide that by the original weight, which was the 69. And then you'll get a number like 0 0.173, a really long number. Times that by 100 and you'll get 17.3 something, something, something. So now because it's a point number, you have to either round up or down. Anything, if you don't know how to do that, anything, so if you've got 17.3, so anything that's point 0.4 and below, so point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4 below, you round it down. So that number would literally be 17% and that's your answer because it's 17.3. So you're rounding it down to 17, so it's 17% body loss and that's your answer. 
but if it was to be 7.5, 7.6 or 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, you round it up so then it'd be 18%. I hope that makes sense. In my head it makes sense. When I'm explaining it, it makes sense. I hope you understand that. Another question you might get is about IV fluids. So the doctor prescribes 100 milligrams of prednisolone in 1000 milliliters to be given over IV in 30 minutes. But how many milliliters per hour should the pump rate be set at? So to me, in my mind, that's quite a simple question because you've already got the 30 minutes, you've already got the milliliters that you need. So you've got two 30 minutes in 60 minutes. So you literally just times in it by two. Does that make sense? So it's literally a thousand. You've got your thousand in 30 minutes. So then you double it because you want an hour. And then that's it, it's 2000, 2000 milliliters an hour. It's really, really simple as that. But then there is another one that might pop up. So you might have 1,000 milligrams in 1,000 milliliters over 40 minutes, but you want an hour. And that's where it gets tricky. And so what I would do is I would divide the 1,000 by 40 because then you're getting what it is per minute. So 1,000 milliliters divided by 40 minutes, that'll give you one minute. So then you times that one, one minute by 60 because you want 60 minutes over an hour. I hope that makes sense. Let me just summarize that again. So you've got your thousand milliliters, but it's only in 40 minutes. So you wanna divide your 1000 milliliters by 40 because that's that'll give you the one, it'll give you how many milliliters per minute then. So a thousand milliliters divided by 40 is 25. And then you times that by 60 because you've got the 25 milliliters, but that's just for one minute. So then you times it by 60 because you want it in an hour and you get 1,500 and that'll be your answer. I hope that makes sense. And I really hope that I'm explaining it properly. It's not too bad. I know it probably sounds worse than it is. And then you've probably Googled and you're probably thinking, oh my God, it's not that bad. And for ours, we got a calculator, so it was really easy and fingers crossed for you all if you've got any questions please ask me and if i can explain anything a bit more let me know i'm going to find some links and i'll put some links below as well so yeah i hope that helps and i hope that reassures you and i hope that you feel a little bit better about the maths calculations because i don't want it to put anyone off um going into uni or being so scared i know it's nerve-wracking doing exams anyway because i was really nervous for mine and before I did my drugs calculations, I was I was terrified. But now I've done it, I'm just like, actually, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. As, as long as you read the question and understand the question and use the equations, you're going to be all right. Honestly, you're going to be fine. It's not that bad. I'm terrible at maths. And if I can do it, you can do it.